Welcome to MMA FanCast. Uh, put your hands together for first time guests to the show and new Stellar Fights amateur MMA champion, Keon Lethal Injection. Lomax, Keon, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, it's an honor to uh, get to talk to you. You train out of ground control, uh, which is a gym I know pretty well through Vince Musco, who's been on um, the the show here several times. So it's really cool to get you on to kind of follow up uh, with what he's been doing. So uh, let's jump into it. When did you start training at ground control? When did you start training with coach uh, Vince? Kind of run us down a little bit before we get to the big news of you winning that amateur belt. Okay, I probably started training at Ground Control around two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I initially, I trained there for like a summer in high school, uh, but uh, now I trained there for like a month, and then, you know, I had to like rely on my parents and everything like that. But once I went to college, mm -hmm. um, I trained at uh, another gym called Ryoma Academy, and they was like, oh, you should go back to Ground Control like when you go home and everything. So uh, that's when I really connected with Vince and started training there. Sure. And um, along with the MMA, which is fantastic, you're three and one, three wins in a row, which is incredible. We'll get to the stellar fight, fight, um, which is fantastic. You also are one and oh in boxing and seven and one in kickboxing. Um, and so what with kickboxing going so well, what made you motivated to round out your MMA game and kind of take your skills to MMA? Right. Well, uh, you know, the initial goal was actually MMA. So my first fight ever uh, was an MMA fight, um, which I lost. Uh, but one thing I felt like I did well was my striking. So I really wanted to kind of work on that, you know, and improve that. And, I, you know, obviously all aspects of the game I wanted to get better at. But uh, specifically striking, that was, you know, that shined a little bit. So I wanted to, like, really work on that. Um and when I got with Vince, you know, he does the, he teaches kickboxing and everything. So uh, he had me doing some kickboxing fights to really, you know, get my striking up there. Um, you know, along with uh, other people I work with, like, uh, you know, Sean Sousa, Ryan mm -hmm. Mackin, uh, Nick Ehrlich, um, up at Owens Mills uh, location, the ground control. Uh, they really, like, just improved my game a lot. And so Sean Shusha has been on this uh, show before and, and hats off to him. He's off to a great pro career. I actually got the honor of being cage side and calling one of his fights when he came out to uh, awesome. to fight on the western side of Pennsylvania and fought for 247, which was fantastic to see what he's doing, uh, which is j just incredible. So I think this is really fantastic for people to know that like one of the great things about MMA is that there was a time 25, 30 years ago where people would go into MMA with one discipline and try to win MMA fights. I mean, that's what it was originally designed for. It's cool to see people like you and others where your whole goal is MMA, but you're going to train a different discipline, like whether it's BJJ, boxing, Muay Thai, uh, or kickboxing, to then take those skills back into MMA. So for you, um, wh what, what, what was good about doing those tournaments, getting multiple kickboxing fights in a day which in and of itself it's it's a mind game to be able to fight multiple right. times a day so what do you think has been good about the uh the, the pure kickboxing okay well first off you know fighting two people you you're going over that like you know that feeling them nerves like back to back and then you also got to deal with you know your thoughts on oh how did that previous fight go you know how I performed there, am I a little bit, like, injured or anything like that from that last one? And it, I feel like it really teaches you to, like, push having to go, having to fight multiple people in the same day, so. Mm. Yeah, there's a physical and mental advantage for doing that. So let's let's work back to the MMA. You Your whole purpose is to get good at MMA. You took your first fight, came up short, but now you routed all three fights in a row. What was it like? getting a, a title opportunity for stellar fights um which is, is a promotion i had fighters fight on years ago um usually is it still out the delaware state fairgrounds it's it, that's yeah. where it used to be okay fantastic brad uh i believe still runs that so what was that what was that opportunity like going into it before you ever fought what was it like to get the opportunity to fight for an amateur belt um i mean when i fought um two fights ago, Brian Valentin, he was like, you know, that's like a top contender guy. 
you know, he was undefeated, uh, 2-0. and um, And so they, you know, they pretty much already had it in my head that, like, whoever won this fight could fight for the belt. So, um, you know, definitely, definitely a lot of, uh, you know, things going on there um, as far as that fight. But uh, I don't know. It just, I just... I just already had it in my head like that was that was what I wanted to do after they already you know mentioned that that would be a top contender fight so sure well it is nice to know that that was kind of on the table when you were fighting a little bit before that which is wonderful what was it like preparing um was it a standard fight camp or did it matter a little bit more was it a longer fight because it was in uh, a title was there anything different with getting ready yeah. for a title fight yeah, so um, you know, definitely trained uh changed up training a lot because that was a five round fight. Um, so you know, everything went from like usually practicing three rounds, uh, you know, everything from pads to sparring to everything just went up to five rounds. Um, and then obviously uh my condition and everything increased like a lot more, uh running a lot more, just you know, standing in the gym longer nights because we just we wanted to make sure how cardio was there as well as you know the skill so sure. yeah and you didn't have to fight five rounds because you ended up finishing it in the second which we'll yeah. be excited to talk about but it is a huge step up to train for more more rounds almost double uh, a fight between a three round and a five round it's almost uh twice as long uh talk to us about walk us through the first round um kind of what was the feeling out process like if there was I would think most opponents will try to take you to the ground because of your knockout skills and because of your kickboxing background. So how how did the first round go? Um, so the first round I could see that he was uh very fast, uh moving in and out a lot. Um and I think he he threw a kick and um I like counter shot the kick. So he threw a kick and I like did a counter return, like hook cross. Um and I think that hit hard from the beginning because he instantly like clinched me up. Mm. And from the clinch, I ended up like single leg, tripping him, getting on top. Um, I was on top for a while, got to the cage, uh, landed some nice ground and power from the top. Um, but, you know, my posture was a bit low. He ended up uh, like sinking in the arm bar, which I had to, uh, you know, give mm. up my position to get out of. Um, so he actually ended up on top. Um, he ended up, uh, you know, trying to sink a choke in. Uh, uh, he got it in the first time as I was trying to stand up and I, you know, I fought his hands in and then he ended up, uh, you know, getting his hooks in and, uh, and you know, battling for the choke again. And I was just, you know, fighting the hands. Uh, that was like the last minute of the round. I was just fighting the hands, uh, you know, trying to get out of that. And then we ended up in that position and ended in the round there. Mm -hmm. That was the first round. Um, then going to the second round, uh, you know, coach in the corner events, he was like, he was like, you know, we don't have to grapple this guy at all. He was like, you know, you can take this fight wherever you want to take it. He was like, you know, show him what you're striking like. Like, let's, you know, let's work out striking this round. Uh, so, you know, going into that second round, that's that's exactly what I did. Um, you know, I was just setting them up, uh, you know, with a lot of uh, jabs to the body. I was just setting them up, um, landed a nice uh, faint jab to the body hook up top. I could see that rocking and that pushing them back a little bit. Um, you know, I had... Nice little flurry there, got into the cage, and then I just went for that <laughs> the finish. So yeah, it was a it was a really nice finish up against the cage. And you, you got to post sort of the the 15 seconds, 20 seconds of the finish on Facebook. So it was cool to watch that. And one thing that I saw in the finish, which is really the higher level striking that I know um you've been training and obviously ground control with Vince Muska as their main striking is really known for is you were you were going in for the finish but you were still using head movement at one point he threw a wild punch back you ducked you know you dipped right under it and came back up with the finishing blows how important is it for you to keep your fundamentals of boxing you know striking good because we've seen in mma a lot of times when somebody's hurt and covering up somebody gets wild they ended up getting counterstruck because of you know somebody wildly throwing because they're getting hurt. So what, what was it like for you to, to still show really crisp 
skilled striking, even when you were on the attack trying to finish it? Um, you know, well, for me personally, that's something I think about like all the time. So that meant a lot. Like even, you know, from previous fights, from some of the kickboxing fights and things, I've thought like, you know, I may have won, but I didn't really like mm-hmm. the way I won because it didn't look as good to me as I wanted it to. Um, so, you know, being able to keep that, being able to keep that head movement, keep my uh, my hands up even when I felt like my opponent was hurt, even when I felt like I was in an advantageous position, um, you know, that, that meant a lot to me. That that shows me that um, I'm showing progress, so. Uh, that very much is progress. And with what you said, it's, it's always cool to hear uh, the adjustments that happen between rounds. Obviously, your fight was scheduled for five rounds. So you had more adjustments potentially that you could have done, but you didn't need to because uh, the adjustment to strike more got you the finish. Um, one thing I think that's really cool about a striker like yourself uh, rounding out the game is even though uh, the grappling exchanges weren't fantastic in the first round for you, you could have been finished. It sounds like three different times, you know, two chokes and an arm bar. So being able to work out of that, I think a lot of times people watch MMA and they think, if somebody has to defend, oh, that means they're losing. And that's not really the case because the first round for you allowed you to, to survive, nullify his attacks, and then put him away in the second. I think that's what's really important, uh, w- w- particularly with strikers getting to MMA, is you got to be calm enough to, to not panic when you're putting an arm bar and two chokes, knowing that you still have got a lot of the fight left, and it's got to be defense first before you can then get to the offense. So how much of it were you trying to stay relaxed? You kept talking about fighting the hands that's being technically good. I've seen a lot of fights, even at the UFC level, where guys get uh, finished because they get frustrated. You know, so instead of fighting the hands, they kind of, you can see the the frustration because it is annoying for a striker to have to deal with jujitsu. So what was it like mentally to stay calm, fight the submissions, and then that actually set you up probably better in round two for the striking? Um, you know, I, I just, I try my best to stay calm in those positions. I actually, uh, you know, going back to my training camp, literally, uh, you know, a lot of those days, a lot of those weeks, especially the last week, um, I had people put me in bad positions. I had, uh, you know, teammates taking my back, putting me in side control and holding me there with everything they had, had me fight those also. You know, I already felt like I was prepared for that, that aspect of the game, like, you know, Wherever it goes, I you know I knew he was a higher belt level than me. I think I heard he was a purple belt or something. So you know I expected his grappling to be there. You know, and I I just did everything I could to prepare myself for it. So, well, your preparation um, really showed off. So congratulations not only to you but all the people. You know it, what's cool about interviewing fighters is even though you fight alone, it's not a team sport like basketball or football or something. Um, it is a team to prepare you. And so for all right. those people that held you down or put you in bad spots um, and, and pushed you towards the end there, it really paid off being able to work out of those bad spots. It's been an honor getting to getting to interview you. I think it's fantastic. Congratulations on your title belt. It's it's the obvious question to end on. What what do you see coming up? Is it is it a title defense? You're three and one in MMA. Is it is it get a few more fights? Like what are you and your coaches talking about going forward um is i definitely want to uh, do a title defense for sure um you know just just experiencing that purely like you know you hold this like you know because i, I want to go pro eventually like these are things i want to do i want to take it to the next level so uh preparing myself and having these you know but when i do get to that next level uh you know i want to do everything i can to prepare myself now uh, so definitely uh, going to do a few more MMA fights and we'll see where it takes us. Sure. Well, I'll be excited to see what happens going forward for you. I'd love to have you back on uh, to talk about your future fights. It's really cool to, to kind of catch up with you now after this success and be able to kind of follow you in your journey. So congratulations again to Thank you. Me. You've been listening to Luke Payson at MMA FanCast with the new uh, Stellar Fights Amateur MMA champion, the lethal injection. Lomax, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. You got it. Take care. You too.